Um, you're mu muted. We can't hear you. Thank you. I got it. I apologize. Let's start over again. <laughs> we are here this afternoon. This is for housing contract priority renewals. This is only for students who are living on our Boca Raton campus for the spring semester. If you are a Jupiter student who is joining us, or if you are a student who was recently accepted to FAU for the upcoming summer or fall semester, the information in this presentation does not apply to you. So you should not be watching this information. This is only for our Boca Raton current spring residents. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and proceed. The housing contract renewals are starting on February 6th at 9 a.m. until February 17th at 5 p.m. It is for the up upcoming academic year for the fall semester of 2023, as well as the spring 2024 semester. It is an academic year housing contract, so it is for both semesters. The processes are all online through our housing portal. I've included the link here. And then I've also included the, uh, the web page where it says review steps. That is where we have all of the information, including this presentation online for you and you can review it online as well. This information um, for the renewals, again, it's only for spring residents who, living, who are living on the Boca Raton campus. When students want to take part in this process, the $100 housing application fee will be waived if you do your renewal between February 6th and 17th. It is only waived during that time. Students can make a roommate group up to four students. So it can be students with no roommates, can be two students, can be three students, and it can be a total of four students. In order to request a roommate, you must have completed a housing contract to find a roommate and match with a roommate. And of course, roommate matching by no means is required. That is entirely up to the student taking, um, taking part in this process, whether, they want, whether or not they want to match with a roommate. The options that students have to request for room preferences are the follows. We have University Village Apartments. We have two types of rooms in those apartments. We have studio doubles, which are shared apartments. It is a shared bedroom. Two students are sharing the sleeping area. They share the restroom and they share the kitchen. Then we also have four bedroom, one baths in University Village Apartments. Those are single bedrooms with one restroom, meaning four students are sharing the one restroom. They share the living area, they share the kitchen, and they share the bathroom. Notice that on the studio double, I did not say they share a living area. The living area and the bedroom is all one room. Hence, that's why we call it a studio. It's your living area, your bedroom, one area, plus a restroom, plus a kitchen. Then we have Innovation Village North Apartments and Innovation Village South Apartments. Both of those buildings have four bedroom, two bath apartments in them. Each student has their own single bedroom. And in the four bedroom, two baths, it is two students sharing a restroom and then all four students sharing the kitchen and living area. And in the two bedroom, two bath apartments, those are only in the IVA North building community. And with the two bedroom, two bath, each student has their own bathroom and then they share the kitchen area and they share the living area. The Innovation Village apartments do have uh, microwaves, dishwashers, and a stacked washer and dryer in unit. The University Village apartments do not have a microwave, do not have a dishwasher, and they do not have the laundry in unit. They have a laundry, they have a laundry room. The three apartment communities do not require a residential meal plan. For the students who want to live in a residence hall, the residence hall option next year is Parliament Hall. It has two room types. There are shared double bedrooms in a four person suite. So that means it's two bedrooms, two students in a bedroom, four students in the suite, 
and there are two restrooms. So the shared double bed bedroom four person suite does have two restrooms. There again is no kitchen in unit. And then we have single bedroom suites. So we have a four person suite with four single bedrooms. And then there are two restrooms in the four person suite. Indian River Towers at the bottom, we've abbreviated it as IRT. Indian River Towers and Atlantic Park Towers will not be upperclassmen residence halls next year. Those will be first year residence halls starting for the fall 2023 semester. Our housing rates have not increased and they will remain the same for the 2023-2024 academic year. And those housing rates are posted online for you to review. The housing renewal process, again, February 6th through 17th, students who partake in that process will not be charged the $100 application processing fee. If a student who's on campus during the spring misses out and they don't log in and do their contract between February 6th and 17th, starting at 5.01 p.m. on February 17th, those students will have to pay the $100 application fee again. So if you are planning to live on campus next year, you want to make sure that you're doing your contract between February 6th and 17th so you don't have to pay the $100 fee. All roommate requests must be completed by February 17th at 5 p.m. We will not accept roommate requests after that time period. Um, we will we anticipate we will be filling up quickly and we will not be able to accommodate any late roommate requests. We will prioritize housing assignments in the order that we've listed here on the screen. So this is for all of our students who go through the renewal process. The first priority will be our students who joined us as first year students during the summer and fall of 2022, as well as this spring 2023 semester. The second priority will be students who started during 2021 and our first year students who started in the spring of 2022 and transfer students who started during 2022 and this spring 2023 semester. Third priority will be students who started in 2020. Fourth priority is students who started in 2019 or later. And fifth priority is all graduate students and all second bachelor degree students. And that is regardless of the year of entry that those students have started. So graduate students and bachelor students are the lowest priority for a housing assignment. To renew the housing contract, again, we have this information on our website. Students will log into the housing portal. They can log in starting at 9 a.m. on February 6th up until February 15th at 5 p.m. They will select the academic year housing contract for 2023-2024. They have to agree to the terms and conditions of the contract to proceed through the contract. It is a DocuSign page that will pop up and the students will create a signature to sign that DocuSign contract. If a student is under 18 years of age, they will be prompted to enter a parent guardian email and the parent and guardian will have to first consent to the terms and conditions. So for any students who are under 18 years of age, you have to allow enough time for your parent or guardian to go in and consent before you can complete the entire housing contract. The next step is for them to review their personal details. If their cell phone number has changed, they should update it. If they wanna update their emergency contact information, they can do so. However, it does capture the current emergency contact information that we have on hand. They only have to change it if there is a change. They answer all of the general questions on the general questions page of the contract. There is, a, there is a question on here that asks whether or not they want to request gender inclusive housing. Gender inclusive housing is where we mix students by their biological sex in a suite and in a bedroom. So for students who want to request gender inclusive housing, they may do so by answering yes to that question. They add three room preferences. We just went over those room preferences on the previous slide. Um, and I encourage you to, again, take a look at the room rates in advance so you know what the rates are for the different uh, room preferences. And then they will answer the lifestyle questions. 
these are the same lifestyle questions that we have asked in previous years. And if they know in advance that they're going to want to request a roommate or search for a roommate or, ha or have someone search for them as a roommate, there is a check box on the lifestyle questions page. They must check that box and it says display and roommate search results. We've highlighted it here. So they make sure to pay attention to that in the contract that allows students to be able to search for them and find them. If they requested Parliament Hall, which does not have a kitchen in the suite, they must request a meal plan. So they will be prompted, excuse me, they will be prompted to select a meal plan. Please keep in mind that the final meal plan rates for 2023, 2024 are not yet posted. And those meal plan um, prices will likely be posted in the upcoming months. So be aware that the meal plan, chain, meal plan prices will likely change. Uh, the last step is for students to enter their Z number on the confirmation page. They must enter their Z number with an uppercase Z and their student number to complete their housing contract. This is the last and final step. If they do not put their Z number in and submit say or click on save and continue, their housing contract is not completed and other students would not be able to find them and request them as a roommate and they will not be considered for placement with housing. They receive an email confirmation after they've completed their housing contract. We always tell students they are encouraged to check their FAU student email. This is where roommate requests would go. This is where they'll receive the confirmation that they completed their housing contract. If they plan to request roommates after they've received the email confirmation that they've submitted their housing contract and it's completed, then they may go back into the housing contract and there is a page for roommate selection and they can start requesting roommates. We've created a slide separately just for students to be able to know how to find roommates. Again, they go to the roommate selection page within the housing contract. This is built into the academic year housing contract. So roommates are specific for the academic year. They can request them between February 6th and February 17th after they've completed their housing contract to match with the roommate. And if they know who they're going to request, the what the way that they answered the gender inclusive housing question must be the same. So if you're a student or you are a student out there and you're watching this and you answer no to gender inclusive housing, you can only see other students who have also answered no to gender inclusive housing. If you know who you're going to room with and you answer no, and that individual answered yes to gender inclusive housing, you will not be able to find them as a roommate and request them as a roommate. Your answers must match to the gender inclusive housing question. We've made this really easy for you. If, you're, if your answers don't match, just go back to the general questions page of the housing contract and correct your answer so you can find your roommate. Um, you should discuss in advance if you're going to answer yes or no to this question. It just helps alleviate issue, issues in advance when you're trying to find your roommate. If you've answered the question to gender, gender inclusive housing the same and you still can't find your roommate, make sure that your roommate has checked the box that says display in roommate search results because if they don't check that box, again, you can't find them as a roommate. Um, remind students if you know who you're requesting as a roommate, remind them to check their FAU email account. Those e all of the roommate requests will only be sent to students' FAU email accounts. Um, they should be logging in very frequently into their emails and checking during this time. And then once they receive a roommate request, they go back into the housing contract and log into the housing portal, go into the housing contract, and they can either accept or decline a roommate request. Roommate requests do expire after two days. If you know that you don't want to live with someone who sent you a roommate request, please assist the student and just decline the roommate request instead of letting it expire. It's just a courtesy if you don't want to live with someone to decline their request so they still have an opportunity to match and look for another roommate. 
if a roommate cancels their housing contract and they decide that they're not going to live on campus, or maybe they're not going to return to the university and they cancel their contract, the housing office will place a ran random student in your room with you or as a roommate. You don't have the opportunity after you've been assigned to change your roommate group. So starting on February 27th, this, this process ends on February 17th at 5 p.m. And then on February 27th, everyone is going to receive an email. And there'll be two types of emails. There'll be students who have renewed their housing contract and they receive an email with their housing assignment. They will have until March 3rd, if they don't wanna accept that housing assignment and keep their housing contract active, to cancel their housing contract without penalty. Uh, there is no cancellation fee. There is no criteria to meet to be eligible to cancel your housing contract up to March 3rd without penalty. There are gonna be some residents that we anticipate may receive a notification that they are waitlisted. They will also receive an email on February 27th. So the waitlisted students, and we don't know how many students will be waitlisted. They will be assigned spaces as they become available in early April. Waitlisted students also have three options. They can go ahead and keep their housing contract active. They'll receive bi-monthly updates starting in June, and some students will be removed from the waitlist and receive housing assignments as early as April. If they receive the waitlist information and they know that they wanna move forward with looking for other alternative housing, they can cancel their housing contract on March 3rd without any penalty. The other option is they can keep their waitlist active, they can keep their housing contract active, and they can cancel at any time prior to receiving a housing assignment with no penalty. However, once they are assigned housing and they cancel, there is a penalty. So at the very bottom, we've, we've explained and we've put some asterisks there. It's important if you're a waitlisted student and you find alternative housing or you're not gonna to return to the university, it's very important that you go ahead and cancel your housing contract before we assign you a space. Once we assign you a space, cancellation fees do apply. We created a graph to help explain the process for the emails on February 27th. Again, everyone who does their contract by February 17th at 5 p.m. will receive an email on February 27th. The emails are gonna be either one of two emails. On the left-hand side, they're gonna be students who are gonna receive their on-campus housing assignment. They're gonna know their room number. They're gonna know their roommates. They have these options. They can change their mind. They don't wanna accept the housing contract and the housing assignment. They can cancel by March 3rd without any cancellation fee. There are no requirements to cancel. They complete the cancellation form, which will be in the email notification and we'll remove their housing assignment. We'll cancel their housing contract and they can look for other alternative housing. The next option is um, in the middle. If they decide later on that they wanna cancel their housing, and they do it after March 3rd, then cancellation fees will apply and they also have to meet the cancellation criteria. So the cancellation criteria is outlined in section 11 of the housing contract and terms and conditions, which are on our website. And then the third option in the box is if you receive your housing assignment and you wanna move forward with it, you don't have to take any action by acknowledging that housing assignment, it will remain active. We will plan that you will be an on-campus resident and you just need to make sure, sure that when registration opens for the fall, you register for your fall classes. And if you have any outstanding balances for the spring semester, you wanna make sure that you make sure that you are registered for classes and you pay your outstanding balances to the university. Over on the right-hand side, Again, we anticipate some students may receive a notification that they're waitlisted, and those students have these options. They can cancel their contract by March 3rd with no cancellation fee and no penalty. Again, no requirements to cancel. They'll just click on the cancellation information in the email that they receive, and they can look for alternative housing. 
Um, the other option in the middle is waitlisted students if they decide to keep their contract active, but they find other alternative housing. They just want to make sure that they cancel their contract even after March 3rd before they're assigned housing. So cancellation fees do not apply. We anticipate we'll start assigning students who are waitlisted in early April. And then the far right block, keep your housing contract active. Housing assignments again, we anticipate are going to resume in early April. We will start providing to you bi-monthly updates in June, how things are progressing for waitlisted students. You can cancel at any time prior to being assigned housing without penalty. So those are the options for the waitlisted students. During this process, we will have help in person in Atlantic Park Towers. So the help in person help will be on the in the first floor multi-purpose room of Atlantic Park Towers. There is a direct exterior door to enter into this building. It faces the housing lawn area. Um, for students who are on this call today and Atlantic Park Towers, uh, houses are Get Wise Center. So if you walk past the Get Wise Center, you'll see the entry into this multi-purpose room. Stop in, visit with us, see if you have any questions. If you need help doing your contract, maybe if you need help trying to find a roommate or a friend that you want to request as a roommate, we can help you out with that as well. If you have your own device or tablet, I ask that you please bring that with you. We will have limited tablets and computers available, but when students use their own device, they typically are able to log in quicker because they usually have their login information saved. So please bring that device with you. If you miss one of these three, three days to come in person, we also have help in the housing office and you can come in person to the housing office. The housing office hours are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursdays, and we are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Fridays. I've included our email address there and also our phone number and also our main webpage. Now I've also listed all of the steps again for the, excuse me, for the renewal process with the link. And I've listed our housing portal website at the very bottom. So that is listed as well. So this concludes the presentation. I see that we've got some students who have put some um, questions in the chat, mainly that they couldn't hear me at the very beginning. We fixed that, so I apologize for that. Um, let's see. It looks like we had some questions about studio, shared studio doubles, which my colleague Suzette has addressed that. Um, Someone had a question and they wanted to confirm, are they gonna receive assignment or select their room? In previous years, this process did include students who would select their specific room. This is not a room selection process. This is a renewal process. So you renew your contract up until the 17th. The, the following week, the assignments team works and we assign students to get them into spaces. And then on February 27th, you receive an email with your housing assignment or whether or not you've been waitlisted. Um, the fees, someone asked, what are the cancellation fees if you don't cancel by March 3rd? They are a sliding scale and they are listed on the website. If you go into section 11 of the housing contract terms and conditions, they're listed there or if you go into the housing cancellation page, they are listed there as well. So it's a sliding scale based on the date that you are canceling your housing contract. And of course you have to meet the cancellation criteria if you've been assigned a housing space. Um, someone answered, if you're out of state student, we will be prioritizing all of our waitlist students who go through this housing process. The waitlisted students who um, do renew their contract and you're waitlisted will have priority for placement before any other students that are upperclassmen have the opportunity to apply for housing. So we continually monitor and place students who are waitlisted. We don't know how many students that will impact 
but we are planning in advance that it will impact some of our upperclassmen students to renew their contract. Um, I will share that we, with you that most of our students who renew their contract are assigned housing versus a student who doesn't take part in this, con uh, part in this process. So with that, we've answered all the questions for today. I appreciate everyone's time. Um, please make sure that you um, this presentation is on the main housing website. If you go to the main housing website and you go under current students, that's where you can find housing renewal information. You'll be receiving email reminders about this process again with another one coming out tomorrow morning, uh, reminding you to log in with the steps to do your housing contract. And there is, again, if you participate in this process and you don't like your housing assignment, there is absolutely no penalty to cancel all the way up to March 3rd. So there's really no risk in doing this process. And if you don't like your assignment, then you do have the option to cancel up to March 3rd without a penalty. So I appreciate everyone's time this afternoon. I hope you have a lovely uh, remaining day. And if you have any other questions, please make sure you call our office, you email our office, and we do have a lengthy FAQ for this process on our website as well. So I would encourage you to check that out also. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon.